Hi everybody, how are you? It's Mike Andrew once again providing a short video with practical insights as it applies to business and leadership. I'm going to focus more on the business side today and even more specifically on finance. Finance is often referred to as the language of business and it's often, in, in my opinion, it, I think it's unnecessarily intimidating. There are a lot of senior managers that are intimidated with finance as the language. And all I can say is if I can understand it, anybody can understand it. So let me, let me give you a, a brief uh, overview of one of the two main financial statements. Uh, there's one statement, the balance sheet looks at the financial health. That's, a, that's for another video. I'm going to focus more on the P&L, the profit and loss, often referred to as the income statement. And I'm doing it now because many companies are beginning to um, announce their quarterly earnings. The P&L answers this fundamental, simple question. How did we do? How well did we perform this past quarter or, to year, or year to date? Or at the end of the year, how well did we do during the course of 2023, for example? It answers that question, how did we do? How well did we perform? Did we perform better than expected? Did we perform better than our competitors? Did we perform better this year compared to the same time last year? Are we trending to better performance? Uh, so it looks at, it looks at the, how well did we do. It's a way of keeping score, so to speak. And at a very, very high level, the P&L is looking at total sales or revenue minus all your expenses to get your total profit or net income. Now, what makes it complicated is expenses gets broken out into different ways so companies can manage the business. For example, you may have heard of gross profit. Gross profit is the highest level profitability. It's taking total sales or revenues minus the direct costs associated for, for generating those sales or revenues. And that gives you gross profit. If it's where it should be, uh, or if it's not where it should be, then they know where to target uh, manage, you know, managing the costs uh, that are involved with generating those sales. The rest of the expenses is, <laughs> That's, that's what companies always pay a lot of attention to. It's often re referred to as the operating expenses or OPEX or general selling and administrative expenses. Um, it's, it's really all the expenses associated with running the business. And it's very, that has to be managed carefully because even in good times, uh, uh, it, it, those operating expenses can rise quickly. And of the profitability, there's net income, which is, which is the bottom line, that, but that factors in interest that you earned, interest that you paid, taxes that you paid, zakat if you're in the Middle East that you paid. It factors in amortization and depreciation, which is a non-tax accounting mechanism. Um, but to me, in my opinion, the real significant profitability metric is EBITDA, E-B-I-T-D-A. Uh, is that right? E-B-I-T-D-A, -E earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And the reason why that's important, just let's take it slowly. It's your total earnings before you deduct interest earned or you add in interest earned, deduct interest paid, taxes paid, zakat paid, amortization and depreciation, which is a non-cash accounting mechanism. It's the true indicator, in my opinion, of how of the how profitable you are running the business, how profitable you are running the operations. So that's why you'll hear a lot about EBITDA, really important. Now one personal thing that I look at when I look at financial results, I often look at, uh, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but it's how, what I look at. When a company announces their revenue, and revenues increase, let's say, let's say revenues increase 10%. Well, I always like to see the profitability metrics increase at the same, at the same amount. So if revenue increased 10%, I like to see gross profit increase at 10% uh, compared to last year. If I see uh, revenues increase at 10%, I like to see EBITDA increase at the same amount compared to last year. Now, here's the key. Oftentimes, there's always a reason or an explanation. So if revenue goes up 10%, and let's say EBITDA goes up 2%, well, okay, why didn't, why didn't it go up as much as the revenue at the same percentage? There's always a reason. There's always a story. And that's why the CEO and the CFO, the chief financial officer, will often get on these phone calls with the investment work community, 
the, uh, the investment analysts and explain why. Explain what they're doing. It could be major expense. It could be a one-time expense. It could be certain investments they made. There's always a reason. And that's why uh, having those conversations with the investment community, the investment analysts, is really important. So just to summarize, the P&L, profit and loss, answers the question, how well did we do? And how well did we do compared to last year at this time? How are we doing compared to our competitors? And how did we do according to our plan? So thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time.